Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned, Moon Express unveils expanded plan to explore the solar system, DJI drones being hacked to avoid geofencing, and AirDog introduces new sports follow drone. Hi, I'm Brie Cross. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI. This is serious unmanned vehicle technology. Moon Express, one of the competitors in the Google Lunar X Prize program, has unveiled plans to build a new family of spacecraft. The company's agreement with Rocket Labs, which is developing the electron booster that will propel the Moon Express lander to the moon in hopes of claiming the $20 million GLXP award, covers up to five launches. Following the initial mission, Moon Express has scheduled a launch in 2019 that would establish a robotic research base near the lunar south pole. In 2020, Moon Express hopes to mount the first commercial mission to return a lunar sample to Earth. The central piece of hardware is a single-engine lander, dubbed MX-1, which will be flown on the GLXP mission. Moon Express says it plans to mass-produce the lander and sell it as a lunar explorer, but also serve as a basis for larger and more capable spacecraft, which it calls the MX-2, MX-5, and MX-9. They will combine multiple MX-1 units into a single package of two, five, and nine spacecraft to boost capacity. Moon Express CEO Bob Richards says these larger spacecraft could be capable of reaching Venus or Mars or perhaps further into the solar system. Richards says that the system has the potential to cut the cost of space exploration significantly. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. Ride sharing, such as offered by Lyft's Lyft Line and Uber's Uber Pool, are likely to be the first steps in getting riders to accept future automated vehicles. Representatives of those on-demand services said at the second day of the Automated Vehicle Symposium in San Francisco. Lyft's Joseph Opaku said in five years, most of the company's rides will be in automated vehicles, at least in urban core areas. On July 1st, the 15th Littoral Combat Ship was launched. Lockheed's Indago quadcopter UAS was used to provide aerial footage of the event. The Indago weighs less than five pounds, is collapsible, and thanks to its ability to be equipped with a variety of payloads, the UAS is usable for several applications. The Korea Aerospace Research Institute has conducted successful trials of its TR-60 tilt rotor UAV. The 440-pound aircraft took off and landed on the flight deck of a Korea Coast Guard vessel making 10 knots on July 7th. Carey said that the flight test confirmed the possibility of the TR-60 operating from a vessel and that the UAV can be used in a number of areas, including ISR missions, SAR operations, transport, communication, and relay. A new ASD report projects that the drone simulator market will grow from an estimated $376.9 million in 2017 to $764.7 million by 2022 at a compound annual growth rate of 15.2% from 2017 to 2022. The increasing use of drones for commercial and military applications has led to increased demand from drone pilots across the globe, thereby fueling the growth of the drone simulator market. As you may be aware, Airborne Unmanned is part of the Aero News Network's many news offerings that cover all aspects of aviation and aerospace. We're starting a search for an additional news editor, especially one with unmanned technology expertise, as well as a sales and marketing staffer to support our many news and feature programs. For more information, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. That was our Unmanned Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Hackers are making it easy for DJI drone operators to get around the geofencing function included in the firmware of DJI drones, and the company is taking steps to thwart that practice. Such firmware patches are being made available at various locations on the internet. The drone maker is reportedly very concerned about legal action and does not want its aircraft to be involved in incidents where operators violate the law. The company has begun a firmware update campaign to close any holes in its firmware used to circumvent its no-fly zone restrictions in the past few weeks. 
It has also started removing older versions of the firmware thought to be vulnerable from its servers. DJI spokesman Victor Wang, DJI's technology security director, said that, quote, unauthorized modification of a DJI drone is not recommended as it can cause unstable flight behavior that can make operating the drone unsafe. DJI is not responsible for the performance of a modified drone, and we strongly condemn any user who attempts to modify their drone for illegal or unsafe use. Sports drone manufacturer AirDog has launched a Kickstarter campaign for the development of its latest aircraft, the 82 hands-free sports drone. The 82 is reportedly the, quote, only drone camera built for hands-free from the ground up. The 82 eliminates the need for manned operation, giving the user complete active freedom with perfect content capture. The aircraft has built-in LiDAR preventing ground collision in varying terrain and extreme changes in elevation. Proprietary algorithms utilize data from a barometric air pressure sensor, accelerometer, and GPS to allow for precise and accurate response to elevation changes controlled with air leash. The backlit LCD interface allows the user to read the display clearly in a broad range of lighting conditions. Operators can also program flight paths using a smartphone or tablet device, and there are three free follow modes for use in areas that are clear of obstacles. AirDog has improved its camera gimbal, while the gimbal adapter also charges your GoPro, so there's one last battery to charge. The new auto start stop record feature engages during takeoff and landing to ensure capture every time automatically. It's currently only compatible with the GoPro Hero 5 Black camera. The company hopes to raise $250,000 through the Kickstarter campaign. So far, about $57,000 has been pledged. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.